Well, welcome to this week's analysis behind the news. Uh, it's pretty obvious when you look at the newspapers just how bad things really are relative to an agenda that they are trying to promote out there amongst their readers. Unbeknownst to most Americans, uh, newspapers have never, well, I shouldn't say never, but rarely been started because they wanted to make money. They were started because they had an agenda. They wanted to promote a particular uh, political bent, if you will. The news and everything else was part of that, uh, but then they decided, to, or, or found out rather, over a period of time, that they could slant the news to match that agenda. In other words, you used to have little paragraphs like this, uh, telling what the news was, when, where, how, what, and why. Uh, but now they start off with hearts and flowers and trying to pull you in to the political agenda that they will use this news item uh, to convince you to think a certain way, vote a certain way, uh, what have you. Those are the sorts of things that have changed in the last 200 years in our newspapers. But the point is that it is rare that a newspaper has ever started to pass on the news to the folks in the neighborhood and make money in the process. It's almost always to bend the minds of the individuals, either for good or for ill. Uh, generally speaking today, it tends to be a little bit on the ill side. Uh, for instance, this headline uh, out of terrorist areas, uh, more guns equal more killing. Uh, that's the mantra right now. If we just get rid of the guns, we will have less crimes. They're not talking about all the various events that have happened since Sandy Hook, for instance, where armed individuals uh, have stopped the killing and, and mayhem of other individuals who've come along uh, trying to perform such acts. Uh, they make you think that, uh, that everybody, if they were disarmed, the world would be a peaceful place. Well, it would be. But the problem is that the power would rest in government and the peace would be the peace of the graveyard uh, if you're a race that the government doesn't like, an uh, economic uh, status the government doesn't like, uh, or a religion that the government doesn't like. And you can say, well, those things are nonsense, except all through history. It hasn't been nonsense. It's been fact on the part of those who gain power of government and the power of the weapons, uh, be it swords, spears, which they used to confiscate even if they weren't in the arms, uh, hands of, of the armies of, of ancient uh, countries, down to today where they do with that same thing with guns. Uh, the people, in order to remain free, have to be able to defend themselves in every case and under all circumstances. If they do not have that ability, they will not remain free. That's simple. We could talk more about it, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, continuing the agenda of, of such newspapers as the New York Times, it's here and it is now. Now, do you think this uh, headline grabs your attention inside here? Uh, this agenda, as we know, the New York Times has, has pushed you know, anti-guns, uh, pro-homosexuals, uh, that sort of thing. In this case, it's atheism. Now they're promoting atheism, uh, that somehow that's a, a good thing. Uh, this country was based on a Judeo-Christian uh, platform. If you get rid of the Judeo-Christian platform, this country will fall apart. We are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. In other words, our rights come from God, declares the Declaration of Independence. Uh, everything that we do in the form of government in this country is based on the foundation of a belief in God. And yet what we see in the media, the American Civil Liberties Union and others is to get God out of the schools, get God out of the minds of people's lives, get God out of politics completely. If you do that, you strip morality out and substitute it with a different form of morality, with this situation ethics. Uh, continuing on with the idea of the media uh, trying to get you to think certain ways, and this is a, a recurring theme that I've talked about before, and I'm talking about it 
more extensively in the January and February bulletins of the John Birch Society. And that is the, the idea of the news media trying to get Republicans and conservatives and Tea Party people to moderate, to become more pragmatic. If you just think a little more socialist, you will be more successful at the polls. Well, that's, that doesn't work. If your idea is to bring government back to uh, ethics and morality, sound fiscal policies, uh, the principles of the Constitution and everything else, how do you moderate that? Uh, can you moderate uh, your position on defending life? Uh, can you moderate your position on defending the Constitution? Well, that is what they're trying to get us to do. They're trying to get the Tea Party people, the conservative uh, people in the United States to moderate so they will be more successful at the polls. Uh, that doesn't work. You've got to be even more uh, firm in your principles, on your principled stands. And, and don't ever forget that. They try and demoralize you in these articles to where you either change or you give up and go away. In either case, they're satisfied because that's what they want. And so don't allow this to affect you when you read these things and see these things on whether it's Fox or, or uh, CNN or wherever it happens to be. Uh, there is a movement out there right now to get all the conservative movement, the constitutionalist movement in this country to either go away or moderate their positions. Uh, that we cannot do. Another thing that I want you to, to do is a little exercise, if you can. Uh, if you have a stack of old newspapers in your garage or in your attic or wherever it is, try and look at some of those newspapers before 9-11, the terrorist attack on New York, and compare those newspapers with the newspapers you have today relative to terrorism. We started a war on terrorism, an international war on terrorism. We even uh, imposed many draconian rules and regulations over our own citizens in the name of this war on terrorism at airports and increasingly in various hubs of transportation around the country. Now, what I want you to do is to take a look at that old newspaper and compare it with the new newspapers that you get on the stand today. See how much terrorism was active, reported on, going on in those old newspapers compared to what it is today, and it is astonishing. There's almost none prior to 9-11, but once we instituted the war on terror, all of a sudden it's everywhere. Uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, one of these days I'll do an analysis of it, uh, but for now I just want you to take note. The war on terror isn't any more successful than the war on drugs uh, the, uh, or, or any other war that we've ever been engaged in. Uh, particularly in Iraq, we're seeing that reverting back again uh, to where it was. Now the, the powers of the Ba'ath Party are starting to come out again. Uh, I thought we eliminated that with the death of Saddam Hussein, but apparently not. And all of that sort of thing, what's happened in Egypt, came about because that the, the, the uh, uh, the Islamic summer, or whatever they call it, uh, the changes that are going on in, in, in uh, Libya, the changes that are going on in Egypt, the changes that will go on in Syria, the changes that have gone on in Iraq, the changes that have been going on in, in Afghanistan, etc., are not for the good. Oh yes, we got rid of that ruler to replace it with another ruler, but it is anti-Christian, it is anti-Semitic, it is very strong in its Islamic Sharia uh, implementation. Uh, it does not bode well, and yet we're sold by our own government that we're doing a magnificent job with the State Department and the Department of Defense in changing things around the world and getting rid of terrorism. Go to those two newspapers and decide for yourself. Look at the old, look at the new. I think you will find it very shocking. Until next week, we'll see you then.